going on. Past. When you rejoice in the Lord, when you rejoice in your tribulation, because you know God's going to turn it around. You know God's going to turn it around. Because when you spend time with Him, you know. You know. You know. You know. Lord, we welcome you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your fire in this place that burns up every trace of the enemy, that burns up every mindset and feeling that does not line up with heaven. We thank you, Father, that this is a great day in you, God, that, Lord, your spirit rules and reigns in this place. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do today in the house.
I've seen the beauty of the grave wide open. Resurrection power, the curse is broken. Jesus is the way. The truth and life, the only way. Oh, yes, the name Yahweh. One way, Jesus, that our hearts don't fall. Turn your fear, and we are crying out. Heaven on earth, here and now. One way, Jesus, holy ghost, revive. Turn your thunder, and let us take this ground. And tongues of fire. Begin the spirit and start revival. Jesus is the way. Truth and life, the only way.
This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It may look like 
I'm surrounded by I'm surrounded by glory. Oh, by the fire! It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. Oh, my God. 
generation who made us to be the generation who signs wonders and miracles. Signs wonders and miracles. We are the generation. We are the generation of signs wonders and miracles. We're gonna see it. Oh, and many and many and many are gonna come in. your hand and receive like you're receiving a present. Because oh, the cross did it for you. The blood did it for you. Oh, receive from heaven. Come on, receive from heaven.
As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. As your glory fills this place. Exalted now in the heaven as your glory in this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name of my only. Be exalted now in the heaven as your glory in this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name of my only. So be exalted now in the heaven. As your glory fills the place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name of our name. Oh, worthy, 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 worthy,
That's all he really wants to hear. He wants to hear your song of praise. No matter what. His only pain is to be doubted. Well, I be. I believe you've overcome, and I will lift that song of praise for all you've done. I believe you've overcome, and I will lift my song of praise for all you've done.
My spirit reigns over my fear. You are Lord in this place today. I can feel the glory is near. Oh, I keep digging little deeper, digging little further, pushing past the surface in this place. Breaking off the tension, breaking off the lie, losing the glory in this place. 
spirit man all twisted and tied up and stuffed in the corner. His soul just wants to wants to lead, say, I've been here before. This doesn't end well. The spirit saying, it does end well. It ended well 2,000 years ago. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the spirit of the Lord breaks the heavy curse. The spirit of the Lord it waves off the black hearse. No need to wear the grave clothes. He paid it all. No need to pay penance. Jesus, he took the fall. He really did it all. He really did it all. Don't let that little soul man say you need to do your part. He did it all. Come on. He did it all. Come on. Put that pride aside and receive it now. You're not so special that it doesn't work for you. He did it all. He did it all. We eat our humble pie. He did it all. He did it all. I receive today, God, you died. You died and rose. You died and rose. Went down and defeated death and hell. You took the keys back. You gave us access. We take it back. Soul man, we need to get in line. We love our soul. But our spirit man, he arrives. <laughs> Jesus. All right, well, we've got such a prophetic flow here that we could just go for another three hours. So, uh, but some of you have planned your day to get out of here in a reasonable amount of time. So I'm going to just stop that right now. And you may be seated this morning. And I just want to encourage you. That's why it says in the Bible, that's why there's instruction in the Bible where one or two may prophesy, judge the prophecy. And, and that's, that's exactly why, because... When you get in that flow, and music is very prophetic. Music, that's why people can go to rock concerts or country and western concerts or worldly concerts, and they get in the flow. And then the next morning they wake up in the bed with somebody else and realize they got a whole lot more. And they didn't realize, oh, I, just, I just found myself there. I was taken away in the small s spirit. But that's what happens. We start to get in, taken away, and you give yourself to the capital S spirit. And it's amazing. You can get miraculously healed in your body this morning. Right now, it's a lie 
that you have to pay some penance. I'm going to say it again because somebody, somebody's saying, yeah, but you don't know who I am. You don't know Jesus. It's a lie if you feel you have to pay some sort of penance. This is Holy Week. Today's Palm Sunday. So he is on the throne today. So I acknowledge that he is holy and I acknowledge what he did for me. That I don't put on a cloak of grief. I put on a jacket of celebration, a coat of many colors because of what he has done for me. I'm so grateful for Holy Week. Amen. Do, do some of you follow those holy days? You know, there's, there's a Shrove, Tuesday, and Maud, Thursday, I think. You, you, I, I, don't, I don't follow a lot of those traditional things, but they're good. They're very good. This is Holy Week we're into. This is, this is the time that thousands of year, 2,000 years ago, the, the people were celebrating Jesus was riding into town on a donkey. And they were laying their cloaks on the donkey and laying their, their cloaks on the street and allowing the donkey to ride over it. And the donkey's a symbol of humility. You know, a king would normally come in on a powerful horse. But Jesus was fulfilling prophecy in Zechariah. I think it's chapter 9. Where it says, your king will come lowly and gentle, riding on a colt. Jesus did all those things. He fulfilled every prophecy. He did it. He did it. It's done. And we're grateful for that. So swim in the pool of His righteousness. He did it. He did it. It's done. It's over. It's, it's finished. It's finished. It's done. I set before you life and death. Choose life. We could get a real, I could do a heavy shirt. Oh, this is the week. Oh, he's on the road. Oh, he bled. And he did. And it's horrible, and I don't even like watching the movie The Passion. I don't. I think it's necessary. I made myself watch it. But I like to celebrate on the other side when he, when he rose, when he defeated death and hell. And I want to live in the reality that he conquered death and hell for me. That ugly, gory side, I guess I could look at that and say, that's what he suffered for me, a pure and spotless lamb. But he did it. It's done. Yeah, ho! Oh, the water is flowing today. It has never stopped. Come and drink freely of the water of life. Yes, know where you came from. History is important. Know where you came from. Know why we're here. Know about your faith. Yes, you should study it. Yes, you should know about Holy Week. And Hosanna means save us. Hosanna in the highest. But also have a revelation that those are the same people that a few days later ran away. And some likely were the ones that said, crucify him. Crucify him. People are fickle. But God, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we are focusing this holy week on what he accomplished. What he did. We're so grateful, so thankful. Wow. We're the church. We're the church of the victorious one. We're a live church. We're a life church. We're full of zest for life, for living. Wherever we go, death has to get out of the way. Wherever you go, you're a bright light. You shine. There's people that don't even want you at your parties because you'll wreck the darkness. You'll wreck the complaining spirit. You wonder why you don't get invited over to the McGillicuddy's anymore. Because the last time you went over there and you just said, I'm going to change the subject. Let's talk about something victorious. And they went, what? It's true. It's not hard to be persecuted for righteousness. Just start to shine the light. Woo! Somebody said to me yesterday, have a good day. And I said, I promise I will. I stopped having bad days. 
I stopped having grievous church services. I just won't do it. He did it. It's finished. It's over. I grieve for lost. I grieve for the, I hurt for those that are lost, the sinners. But I don't put on a cloak of heaviness. I don't hang my head and say, oh, this is the week. Oh, we have to come into conformity with that ugly religious spirit. That's the only people that Jesus was hard on were the religious ones that should have seen his coming. Well, I'm declaring to you today, he's here right now by his spirit. Holy Spirit is here. Hell's job is to keep you from victory in life. Hell is working full-time to keep you out of the joy of the Lord. Full-time. Full-time to penetrate your mindset to think on anything negative, anything of yesterday, last month, last year. I, I, your past is like the wake of a boat. It's there. The boat was there. But it dissipates. It's gone. But what's important is today. Where is the direction of your vessel today? Where are you pointed today? Today, forget about an hour ago. So what if you fought on the way in? I want to make plans of victory and overcoming and influencing for good things, for overcoming the spirit of fear, for overcoming the spirit of depression, for overcoming the spirit of false hope, or hope deferred. I want to join myself to life and life more abundantly. I want to be a thing that when you poke me, what oozes out is goodness and hope and glory. Amen. Wow. Joel Roberts is going to take up the morning tithes and offerings. Man, come on up. Come on up, Joel. So, man, we bless you, Joel. This guy, he, I have had the ultimate pleasure. We were renovating a bathroom. I think I already said this, but I'll just say it again. We were renovating an upstairs bathroom. Linda was away and traveling. And uh, I thought, what a great time. The girls were all away. It was just Joel and I. And Joel was in his office like the whole week because he's, he's just on the tail end of becoming a certified counselor. And so... But, like, it was muffled enough that I couldn't hear, like, the confidential, whatever. But the guy was in there, and he just, he has to be so stealthy because he's in the world. And, and he, he can only counsel people according to what they're asking him to counsel them for. So he can't just pull the Jesus card and say, hey, you just need Jesus. But hearing his flow so touched me because I thought, the last thing we need is another me. Or another Linda. We don't need another Dan or another Linda. We have one of those. Each. But we desperately need another, like we needed a Joel. And we need a Rachel. And we need a Caitlin who's preaching internationally today. If you didn't know, she's overseas right now and doing some mission work. And your name is in there too. We need the original people doing what they're called to do. You just, Joel, you just, you wreck me all the time. You, you really do. And I, I publicly wanted to acknowledge that because people miss you sometimes. They overlook you. And you know what it's like to be overlooked. And you know what it's like to not get invited to parties. Yep. But I'll tell you, in the days ahead, keep your eye on this guy. He's, he, we're gonna have, we're gonna have to protect him because of the people that want to get to him, because of the wisdom and the strategy and the anointing on his life to counsel and love people, loving the unlovable. So, kudos to you, Joel, for loving the unlovable. You've just been doing a great job. So good, thanks, Doug. <sighs> well, that's fun. Here's that. Well, it's time for a morning ties and offering. Come on, we can do better than that. Uh, okay, a couple of minutes here. Sorry, I, I can talk a lot, so I'm trying to watch time. Uh, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I first, like, I've grown up so many, and I've heard so many different timing messages, offering messages. When you grow up in church, it's, it's kind of a weekly thing. And I remember when I was first, um, 
I think a few years in becoming a pastor and starting a group and so my actually my dad would help me out. He would be like, Oh, so now it's time for you to like tell people to give and I and I would be like I don't think I wanted to admit it, but inside I was like, uh, I don't want to ask people for money. It's so cringy to me. I don't want people to think that I want their money and trying to manipulate them. I'm going to be honest. That's that's what I thought. <laughs> but I love what Proverbs three nine um, says, and it's a very familiar verse, but I think it's very important. It says. Honor the Lord from your wealth, and from the first of all your produce, so your barns should be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. You know, we get so excited over verse 10, where it talks about the vats, it talks about the overflow, it talks about prosperity. But one thing the Lord's been talking to me about is the very first word, honor the Lord of your wealth. You know that? You know, every time you give, you're not giving just to the church. You're giving to the Lord. You're giving to Him. And it's just on over the Lord with your wealth. You know what that tells me? It's not about the money, okay? It's not about $500, $5,000, $5. It's about your heart. So it says on over the Lord with your wealth and from the first of all your produce. So we need to understand that it's not just we're giving something, but it's our attitude of how we give determines how it's received. Did you get that? So, I'll tell you what I'm giving to, okay? If you're like, Joel, why do you give to this house? I am giving because of a mandate on this house which I believe is to see heaven on earth in Muskoka. Yeah, and around the world. But heaven on earth, that's why I'm giving. I'm not giving for a new media thing. I'm not giving for all this stuff. And guess what? We need all of that because we need to advance the kingdom. But my, how I told myself is I'm giving to see heaven on earth. So this is my opportunity to partner with what God wants to do. And how many of you guys know that where we put our money is determines how important it is to us? Okay. Yeah, if you guys want to... I'm totally mess this up again. Um, if anyone needs an envelope, they can raise their hand. Um, but yeah, I think we're ready to connect. That, oh, we do with declaration first, of course. Okay. Bottle... Ready, guys? Bottle, I'm sowing the seed of finances into the glory. Your word says that you will supply for all of my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In the glory, I know I will find salvation, unity, wisdom, knowledge, revelation, healing, deliverance, supernatural abundance, prosperity, and miracles. As I sow the seed to heaven, I will use the Holy Spirit to use it where it is needed, and I look forward to my harvest of joy in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You know, one of my, you guys can correct, I think one of my most yearning moments with giving when it came to finances was I remember being in Bible school. I was going for my third year. I remember I had to work three months out of recycle plant to pay for my tuition, to pay for my expenses because I was going away for nine months to California. And I remember three weeks before I'm about to go, I calculate all my expenses and I calculate, I, I do you a budget in my head and I'm like, oh no, but 10% if I give. I'm not going to have enough. Oh. And for me in that moment, it was actually a way to hold. It was actually a way to hold to actually think. I remember being like, well, I've grown up giving all the time. But if I don't give this time, I have enough money for Bible school. 
nothing is going on in my head. <laughs> so I remember thinking, well, the Bible says that if you give to the Lord, He'll give you more. And guys, I'm going to a place where I'm going to the states where I can't work. So when I get all my expenses, it's, it's done, right? There's no sort of, you can work, you can figure it out. And so I remember giving, giving that money and being like, well, and in those last two weeks, $3,000 came in, which is more than enough for me to go on my trip and actually have some fun and pay my expenses. And it was great. But I yearned to me that day. I yearned, even if I give in yak, giving in yak to a supernatural God gives me the resources I need to do what He's asked me to do. And I had enough to do my third year of Bible school. So, if you're like, I'm struggling today and I don't know, just give to God. Give to that supernatural one. And He'll give you more than enough. So, Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you, God, for people's finances. Yo. We thank you, God, for the businesses, God. We thank you, God, for whatever it is, God. And yet I thank you, God, that we are faithful givers in this house, God. I thank you, God, that thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'll multiply, God, what they've given, God. And yet I ask you, Lord, that, Lord, if they're giving, God, out of need, God, I thank you, Lord, that you will give them a dream, you'll give them a vision, you'll give them a supernatural idea, you to make wealth. God, you're the God of wealth, God. And Lord, I thank you in this case, God, we're going to have wealthy people, Lord. We're going to have people, Lord, who know their God, Lord, and do mighty exploits. Can we bless everyone here? And we bless those that couldn't give. And we thank you, Lord, that your kingdom come and your will be done in Muskoka. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Joel. That reminded me, uh, I forget which kids it was. I think it was Joel and Kate, actually. They were going to do their first year of Bible school, and there was a shortage of finances. And uh, I don't know, it was a week before or something. And uh, one of the fellows that I was mentoring at the time called me up, which wasn't at all unusual because I get, I get calls all the time from people that I'm working with, and said, I, I really need to meet with you. I need to talk to you. I really thought it was just a normal thing. So, I mean, I said, sure, and said, why don't you pop by the house and pick me up, and we'll go for a chat. I actually thought, you know, his marriage was in trouble, or, you know, he had the big fight and did something horrible. Like, it was a pretty serious phone call, and he, he picked me up and jumped in his truck. And I remember, because he pulled out of the driveway, and he just pulled down the street, like, 500 feet and pulled over. And it was like awkward. It was like these two men in this truck and he's, he was nervous. And I'm like, what's this guy going to tell me? And uh, he said, my wife and I were praying and we need to give you this. And he hands me this envelope. And I knew it was money just by the just by the envelope. I literally thought it was like 50 bucks or $100 or something. And I, you know, we spent another 20 minutes together or something and prayed together and backed up, turned around, did the 500 feet, dropped me off, and he left. And then I opened it in the house and I started counting it out. It was like $2,500. And that's what the kids needed for Bible school. And the kids will never forget it because we, we took, we had a coffee table in this room and we spread it all out on the coffee table and we said, kids, that, and it was to the dollar of what they needed. And it came from a very unlikely source. To this day, that person has never given me money again, had never given me money before. He didn't know the need. I'm telling you, if you want to live a supernatural lifestyle, there's a cost. And that's what we're going to talk about today. You see, I got my trusty shovel out again. I'm not letting you guys off easy. Because God's not cheap. Yeah, you might see a 50 blowing down the sidewalk. But 
usually the treasures come with some effort. Right? Am I saying something that's not true? Has anybody not realized that a university degree, you don't get that in a week? There's some effort. If you're a skilled carpenter that's never gone to school, I don't care how good you are with your hands, it takes hundreds of hours working with other skilled craftsmen and craftswomen for you to hone your skill, for you to just get better at it. Like, there's a cost. You don't get handed the saw to cut the $10,000 marble countertop your first day on the job. And if you do, your boss is just not thinking. Why? It takes some effort. Let's get, get our Bibles out this morning. And, and uh, I wrestled for a whole five minutes uh, about preaching a traditional Palm Sunday message. And I have it available that I can print out and you can take home and read it if you want. I'll give you a couple of the highlights. I think I did. I tried to slip it in already because some people like the holidays preached. But Jesus came. This is the week, Holy Week. And Jesus came riding into town on a donkey, which was a symbol of humility. And the coats laid on the donkey were... What people would do, they would lay their coats down in the streets for royalty, so they were acknowledging that he was royal, and the donkey was a symbol of humility. You know, I've even preached a message years ago called Donkey Conqueror, and uh, how that donkey represented a sinner, and Jesus came on the back of a sinner, like representing, and how, anyway, this whole thing. But if you need those notes later, I will give, I would even preach it to you privately if you like, just to make sure. But I really, I, I do, I believe God wants to do something different today. And, and we're on a theme right now. We're on a theme of prayer. I want you to turn in your Bibles this morning. Luke chapter 6. Prayer life of many have been transformed in this last season. And I'll start out with a little, little story. A pastor's grandson was once playing hide-and-seek with a friend, and he found a great hiding place. And he waited for his friend to find him. Just make sure everybody heard what I said. There was a pastor's grandson playing hide-and-seek with his friend, found a great hiding place, waited for his friend to find him. That fly's back. I want to kill that fly. There it is. I got it. I got it. I got it. There it is. Just, yep, got him. He's, whoa, yep, he's done. That's what happened in praise and worship. I've had them come and land right on my nose during praise and worship. When we were outside, it was a bee buzzing around my face. So flies are symbolic in the Bible. The devils, just in case you didn't know that. Anyway, uh, Lord of the Flies. Anyway, so the fly is dead. So uh, the pastor's grandson found a really good hiding place, and uh, he waited, but his friend never came. In fact, his friend had never even started looking. He left the little boy and went home. With tears streaming down his face, the little boy ran to his grandfather, who had great wisdom, and told him what had happened. His grandfather actually broke into tears and said, God says the same thing. I hide, but no one tries to find me. Many people today regard the church as a holy and restricted place. The feel that only the special people, such as ministers, worship leaders, elders, deacons, can ever do or say anything, but this is far from the case because of the work of Christ. Not only can we enter God's holy places, but we may also approach God directly. The approach to God is a personal relationship with Him, and that is what He desires most of all, to have a meaningful, personal relationship with Him. His only pain. I remember Bobby Connors. I was serving him years ago. I was his driver and water guy and Bible carrier and everything. And that, that stuck with me, that season I spent with him. He said, God's only pain is to be doubted. He 
He's a loving Heavenly Father. He's a good, good Father. He doesn't want to hurt you. He doesn't want to harm you. But He will allow you to run away if you choose so. So let's go. Luke chapter 6. Starting in verse 46. Here, get my Bible and notes and Mr. Fly into his grave there. There we go. Flies can't land on a hot stove. Okay. Verse, verse 46, Luke chapter 6. I've got it in my notes here. I don't need to turn to it. It says, But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he, or in this case, she is like. And this this is the verse that we want to zero in on today. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings, does them, I will show him whom he is like. Verse 48 is our key scripture today. There we go. He or she is like a man building a house who dug deep. Whoa, let's stop right there. So the title for today's message is Past plowing. Past plowing. He's like a man who whoever wants to fully follow the Lord. And you know, Jesus talked about in Matthew 13, and I, I think it's Luke chapter 6, he talks about the parable of the sower. And in the passage, Jesus describes someone who's planting seeds into four types of soils. The hard path, the rocky, the thorny, and the good soil. So three out of those four soils could actually receive the seed. The only one that couldn't was the hard packed ground that the seed couldn't even penetrate the soil and the birds of the air, which represent devils, came and stole the seed. So other than the hard path, every soil was capable of producing a plant or of some sort, although they had potential. It was not fully realized due to internal or external variables. These variables robbed the soil of nutrients, water, sunlight, making whatever might grow vulnerable and doomed to die. But Jesus here, he's talking about a man building a house who went past plowing. He's like a man who dug deep, laid the foundation on the rock, and when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against the house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. So stay with me together. Past plowing. We're not talking about plowing a field. We're not talking about four different soil types. We're not talking about surface things. This is a big deal. Jesus starts it out in verse 46 and says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I told you to do? Has anybody heard somebody say the Lord? Oh, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Oh, the Lord, I pray. The Lord showed. The Lord. And you're like, but you don't live like you're here in the Lord. Chances are, they've never dug deep. This shovel? Got to come up with a name for this feller. Some miles on this. Imagine if this shovel was... I'll give you an example. Years ago, years ago I worked with an entrepreneur and... uh, he, he loved the phrase multipreneur. He was a multipreneur. 
And he always had five or six businesses on the go. And we went to a, a, a safety store or whatever, and he bought a new pair of boots. And he had the truck to match. You know, he always said, you know, i got to show up in a big work truck, big tires, you know, look the part. So he bought these brand new work boots, went outside, and went into the mud, just get them all scuffed up because he didn't want to show up at a house. He wanted to look like he'd been working hard. But you can't fake it if you're the man that dug deep. I don't care what you wear. And anybody who has spent any time in the marketplace knows you don't ever, on a job site, corporation, factory, you don't ever judge a book by the cover. If you do, it shows your ignorance. Oh, that must be the CEO over there, the, the guy in the tie. I'm going to, how you doing, Mr. Uh, Mr. John Doe? Uh, I'm blah, blah, blah. It's like, uh, yeah, no, I, that's not me. Uh, he's over there. Where? Underneath the press. Where? Which guy? The guy, the guy, the guy in the new Nike shoes? Or, no, no, the guy under, underneath there. He's, he's under the press. Anybody that started something from nothing has learned how to dig deep. Some of you are going, yeah, yeah, I know. Quitting's not an option. Lord, Lord, but you don't do the things I say. You're shallow. We're on a theme. We want God to move. I am not interested in a vocation as Pastor Dan with a cute congregation that has nice lunches and we're so super organized. If anybody's ill or has a need, we're all over there like, you know, right away swarming in with hot pack lunches and everything. I want those things. I do. But it has to be all undergirded with hearing what God is speaking to His body. It has to be Spirit-led. So if we are going to build what God wants us to build in Muskoka and not say, Lord, 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 Lord. You know, I know the media department is putting together this amazing video. I, I saw a clip of it this morning, and it touched my heart. I'm like, wow, that's cool. And they took clips from some of our guest speakers and zeroed in on, you know, some of the words they said, whatever. And I thought, that is a cool video. And that really happened. And it will draw people to our ministry. It's well done. Whoever did that video, and I, I think I know who it is, but I'll wait and give credit when credit is due. But you can tell they put some effort into it. They dug deep. Hours going through to get the right clips. But how sad it would be if somebody watched that video and then came to this house and the rest of us weren't lined up with what they saw with the speakers releasing the word. You gotta come to my church. Anybody ever done that? You gotta come. You gotta come to my youth group. I remember it vividly. You gotta come. Come with me. You gotta come. And then the Sunday you brought the person. It was awful. That's not an option. You're the body of Christ. We don't call heaven and get put on hold. It's just sometimes there's some stuff in the way that, like, if the dog is coming at me when I'm in the backyard digging the, the, the trench, I'm pulling the shovel out. If somebody broke into my house and it's going to ravage my kids, I'm going to grab whatever I can grab. They're going to get a couple of shots over the bow first, 
I believe in warning people. But why, when it comes to the things of the Spirit, do we want to stay so darn shallow? A wrong look? A wrong exchange? And there's a tendency to pack it all in. When Jesus tells us, Luke, whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he or she is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. So that means when you and I choose to dig, we are going to uncover some stuff. There's a guy who has a YouTube channel, and he goes into these 1800s villages and gets the old maps out, and he finds the outhouse where it was. He digs in the outhouse, and he finds all these bottles, all these medicine bottles and all this stuff that have literally been there since the 1800s. And he literally, he's digging away. You can watch his channel. You're all going to check it out. I, I'm giving him a free thing. I don't even know his name. But anyway, he goes, oh, here we are. And he can tell by the color of the soil. Like, he's past the, what an outhouse was used for. And he can see the layers. But, I mean, it's hundreds of years ago. And these bottles are preserved. And people have been walking over them for 100, 200 years. Didn't know they were there. It's not until we're willing to get the shovel out and start to dig down. But the Word promises us that if we're going to heed Jesus, we're going to dig down and eventually we're going to hit the... It doesn't say... It doesn't say for two weeks. It doesn't say for 60 days. How come your foundation went in in a month and mine's taken seven years? How much do you want to dig? I've seen people completely transform. My daughter, who's not here right now, is speaking as a revivalist at a conference a year or so after she has, when she first kind of moved back home and there was some things that when we chatted, I was like, wow, that's a different theology than I'm running because of the circle she was running in. And I have seen the Lord come on her life and her to just heed the Lord. That's it. Her to just heed the Lord and literally dig deep for the last eight months. Just dig. Dig, 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 dig. And because she digs, she's hit the rock. And now God is building on the rock. But you can do that over 40 years if you want. You can never hit the rock. When you hit the rock, you're going to know. Well, that's all I had to say. So, you are the miracle. You were designed in heaven, but you're called to function on earth. You, you are the miracle. You're pretty darn amazing. You know what I'm talking about. You know when you, when you dig and you hit the rock and you're like, yep, I can build on this. The goal is that you, God wants to build an entire tabernacle on that. He wants, he wants a house. He wants a house that if it's minus 25 or plus 30 inside that house, temperatures the same. External things can't affect the internal. He's looking for a bride. Can you imagine if I every morning went upstairs and woke my wife up? Are we still married? Do you still love me? Are you an idiot? What's wrong with you? 29 years this year. Are you drunk? What's wrong? Of course we're married. I don't have to ask my wife every day if I'm married. 
We got married. I remember the moment. I remember we stood there, gave my life. Audience there. There's certain things in our marriage that are absolute non-negotiables. We don't we don't even use the D word. It's never come up. It's not an option. And now 29 years in, with three kids, the stakes are higher. But it's taken 29 years of digging. Marriages, good marriages, take time. To be a good wife takes time, right, Linda? To be a good <laughs> that was supposed to be a joke. To be a good husband, it takes time. Don't be so hard on yourself. The point is, if you're in a relationship, or maybe you did experience the D, maybe you did experience the setback, don't you stop digging. Don't you stop building yourself better to get down to the rock where you can build because nobody can keep you out of your destiny except you. You are the only person that can keep you out of your destiny. When you and I stand before Jesus, it's not going to cut it. To say, oh, this person in church, they did this to me. God's going to go, here's your life. Here's your shovel. Yeah, Lord, thanks for the shovel I got that night at youth group. I waxed her up, put it in a glass case. And any time the times got tough, I'd just look at the shovel and hope that you'd come through for me. Jesus taught this. He taught it in the, the, the parable of the talents. He gave a guy one shovel, one talent. And he said, I knew you were a hard man. So I took my shovel. I'm changing the word. I was afraid I'd get it dirty. I'd dull it up. And I put it in a glass case so I could give it back to you. What did Jesus say to him? Let's be a mature church here. What did he say? Oh, you poor dear. You misunderstood me. He said, you wicked and lazy servant. I was listening to a podcast this week. And the, the theme of the podcast was cultural transformation. Every pastor's buzzword. I'm changing culture. How's the culture in Bracebridge? Oh, Life Church. We're changing it. We're changing the culture. Right? That's that's what this podcast is all about. And every time they bring a guest on this podcast, they ask, and these people are successful people, obviously. You don't want to listen to a podcast. Uh, what did you build? Oh, I tried to start my own t-shirt company once, but I failed and lost everything, and then I now, I don't do anything. I'm unemployed. There's nothing to say. No, they, they get people that have been successful that have taken the shovel, right? That's who you want to hear, right? Anyway, they introduced or they interviewed this wonderful woman on there who's done some amazing things, great accolades. And the last question of every episode is, because it's the same every time they say, so, so and so, do you feel can you give me your definition of cultural transformation? Do you feel you're changing culture? And they all say, oh, well, most speakers will say, oh, you know, when I planted my Feed the Hunger program and we we fed 500 single dads or single moms and we clothed a thousand kids or we built wells in that. This person touched none of that. They pulled it all the way back to this time of year that we're going to celebrate another week. And they said, you know, Jesus and his disciples, Jesus told them to pray. Dig. I've been telling you guys for months. Dig. Pray. And Jesus was at the pinnacle, the most important part of his ministry, the releasing point that changed history forever, the crucifixion. The disciples ran away. Except one. Followed from a distance. 
and you can preach on that message and say he warmed himself by the fire, but it wasn't God's fire. And anyway, my point is, heaven, heaven was rejoicing. Earth was mourning. Jesus was doing the most important thing that he was called to do, and earth thought that they had lost their leader because they were living out of the soul, out of the body, out of what their eyes could see, out of what their ears could hear. But heaven was rejoicing. Even when we're going to, and we'll talk about it maybe a little more next week, even when he rose, Read the scriptures. Maybe we'll pull out a few highlights next week. And the women that Jesus revealed himself to ran to the disciples and said, I've seen the Lord. And guess what they did? Well, I knew he was going to do it. Yeah, just like he said. He wrote. They doubted. They doubted. And there's many accounts to where Jesus did wonderful things. The day of Pentecost, the Spirit is poured out. 3,000 people get saved. They're speaking in other tongues, but some walked away and doubted. It was the 120 that were in the upper room that chose to dig. They even had their moments. But there is something about it when you start to discipline your body and your soul and say, you're going to pray. You're going to read your word. Right now, I don't want to. I want to eat chips and popcorn. Binge on Netflix. I'll watch The Chosen. You make these deals with yourself. I'll dig a little later. How's that going for you? Yesterday, I found a deal. I like to do business. And uh, almost seemed too good to be true. Better not set that there. I want to wreck Kevin's super deluxe uh, sound system there. And, uh, yeah, it's one one of my tools of choice. And uh, anyway, this person texted me, never met them, and carried on a conversation. I was like, this is good. I like this. And uh, back and forth, back and forth. This is a pretty stand-up guy. And and then I gave him an email address of mine. I have multiple email addresses and made some comments. He was just really building me up. And uh, for this business deal, just going to buy some stuff. I, I regularly will buy stuff, sometimes keep it, sometimes fix it, sell it. You know, I'm very good with my hands. I, I enjoy that. It's my downtime. I'll go into my shop and I'll, I'll work. And uh, anyway, he made comments, oh, are you retired or something like that? Because I said, you know, I'm not available. Till my weekends are busy. I said, I'm available Monday to come and pick this item up. And I only wanted white item, but he had three three of this item, and it priced looked reasonable, and they were fixer-uppers, because I had posted an ad and said, I'm looking for this particular widget and whatever, and this guy texted me, saw my ad, and said, I have the widget and everything, and, and had these conversations, whatever, and, and, uh, and, and then, you know, it was about 15 or 20 texts. In fact, I had breakfast with somebody yesterday from the church here, and I was even texting during breakfast. I'm like, wow, I'm excited. I love doing business. And uh, anyway, then I got the text that said, you know, somebody else is interested. And uh, they're willing to give me a deposit if I hold it till Friday. But, my new buddy Dan, if, if you're willing to give a deposit, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll hold it for you. You're, you're the first one. Because I, I, I was like, I'm not available till Monday. Just a hint. Most times, pastors take Monday off. So normally, Monday's my day off, right? 
And uh, I was all excited, and, and I thought, wow, this is a multiple thousand dollar deal. I, this guy's going to want, you know, thousand dollars to hold it or whatever. And, and it was a small amount. He said, so what, you know, what's it like a hundred dollars or whatever to hold it? And I'm like, yeah, a hundred dollars, I'll give a hundred dollars. This is a great deal. I want it. And I was sucked in. But I've done a lot of business. I've done a lot of digging. And there was just something. My business partner, his name's Holy Spirit. His initials are HS. And HS was going, Dan, look at those three pictures he sent you, the three different units. Yeah, yeah. The one picture is at this location. This one's another location. This one's at another. Why are they not all at the same place? Anyway, so I texted another business friend of mine, and he gave me some advice as well. And I just said, it smells like something's wrong. And then because of my technical background, I asked him questions. He didn't know that I was changing it. I said, so is this the one with the transmission with the three-speed? There's no such thing as a three-speed transmission in this particular widget. It doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. Is this the American model or the European model? And I just made up some technical garbage. Like, does this one? And then I said, the pictures are a little blurry. It looks like they have the disc brakes on them. That would be the American model for sure, right? None of these particular products ever had disc brakes. And this person whom I was apparently speaking with said they were a mobile mechanic. So they would know. Why did I know those technical things about that? Why did it, why was I able to ask multiple questions? And then a, uh, another business friend of mine said, you know, really, you're going to get them with this question. And I sent it, and they failed again. Like, they failed, failed, failed. And I knew this person was absolutely 100% lying. They just wanted my, and then sure enough, oh, are you going to get me the deposit? Uh, it's got to be sent to my wife, and she has to leave. And, and like, it was just, it was so bad. Once my eyes were open. The only way that I knew was because I had done the time. The product I was interested in purchasing, I knew the product. I knew it. I knew it. But this person, they defended themselves and like, oh no. And, and you know, then I, I got so interested and I was so blown away how they could lie so easily and want to hurt me and want to take. Like, I watched a whole YouTube video on these classic car scams where it's like fifty or $75,000 for this 19-whatever Corvette when it should be 100000 And people every day get taken for tens of thousands of dollars. They send them the title. They send them, and it's all fake. And this one guy got on there and he went and he said, I'm going to catch this guy. And he even did a fake bank draft and he had his friend manipulate all this. And he had the guy and he caught the guy and he, it's on YouTube and he is having this conversation with him saying, that is not the car. You told me you took a picture of the car this morning. The picture of the car that you sent me is from another website that was taken a year ago. You just changed the logos on the building and did all this stuff. And the guy completely defended himself for about 15 minutes. Lied through his teeth. Like, he even raised his voice. What do you think I am? Do you think I'm running a scam here? These are classic cars, whatever. And unless that man knew, the devil's the same way with the church. He's the same way. It is only till you and I, we cannot escape scriptures like this. If we're going to follow the Word of God, if we're going to be victorious, if we're going to say, I have heard the Lord speak, then we need to be digging, praying, reading the Word, so when the counterfeit comes, we're going to know, we're like, wait a minute. When I was digging, it wasn't like that. The Lord's voice, it was... It, 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 you, you and I, there is, there's no shortcuts. In the kingdom. He's not cheap. It doesn't matter how many schools and plaques and approvals and apostolic stamps. It is the school of dirt and bricks and mortar and life. 
when you don't know, like Joel said, you know, he got up here and really smoothed it out at Bible school. He was freaking out. Ah! No, it wasn't that bad. How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to, how am I going to? And we're like, well, trust in God. You're going to Bible school. What's the point in going if you don't even believe the guy who's taking you there? Test it. The Lord says it, especially with money. He actually says, test me and see if I will not open the windows of heaven on you and pour out a blessing so much that you, you with your shiny shovel, can't contain it. He's God. You can't fool God. I have had so many people try to tackle God. I just get out of the way. You're coming against God. So, if we bring it more back to home, the person sitting on the right, left, front, back of you, they're here today to worship, to get to know God. Our job is to encourage them when they're digging. Even the odd time, jump in the pit and lend a hand. Not from a top go, what are you doing down there? It's taking too long. Come on up here. Let's talk a, a negative talk. No. No, I'm busy digging. Need to give you some points. The job of hell is to quit heaven. I don't know where I got this from, but if I took it from somebody else, I just found it in my notes from years ago when I was preparing for this. Maybe maybe the Lord gave it to me. I don't know, but I'm going to tell you what it is. It says, to walk in the Spirit, your hand will be on the plow. Remember that scripture that says, Whoever puts his hand to the plow, that's just for the soils. If he looks back, is not fit for the kingdom. So in order to walk in the Spirit, my hand needs to be on the plow. So I'm plowing the ground, plus I'm digging down deep. And when I'm plowing and digging, I'm digging in my heart. I'm digging in my mind. I'm digging in relationships. I'm digging around my known way of doing life. I've heard people say, oh, so-and-so, they're not very nice. They just took me out. And I've heard the Lord say, no, they didn't. God took you out. God will use digging situations in all of our lives to expose in all of us what He wants to remove so that He can build His foundation the way He wants to build it so that, the, so that it's solid, so the winds come. Our job is not to go from week to week, crisis to crisis. Our job is to build, hit the rock every single week and know, okay, I've learned. That's why this morning we took so much time praising, praising, praising. We've had it said over and over, come into church ready to go. Come into church ready to go. Then we'll hit it quicker. Then as a corporate body, we can get into the glory quicker. Because in the glory is where the Spirit is moving. In the glory, anything's possible. So I, I, I didn't want to do it because of Easter, but in the weeks ahead, we're going to talk about the two-winged church. We're going to talk about there's a corporate glory and there's a small group glory. But Sunday mornings, literally, when we start to function and operate out of the way God designed the kingdom, glory will be released every Sunday corporately. And you will, you will not, like you, is it Sunday yet? 
because you want to get in the glory. You want to get in the corporate glory. And then when you when you figure out your tribe, your ten people or your twelve people or whatever, your night or your day or whatever you guys meet, you'll figure out there's a glory in that too, and there's an intimacy in that too. And it, it, it's it's I can't wait to, I can't wait till like guys right now I had. Somebody who's traveling right now email me and say, how's men's group doing? I missed last week. I, I missed men's group. How's Wednesday? Is it going good? And I'm like, yeah, it's going good. We're meeting this Tuesday. Brave company. Because we're, we're, we're building something there on a Tuesday night as men. We're coming together and we're, we're opening up our hearts and we're realizing, man, we're really the same. When the glory comes accompanied with it is the spirit of revelation, and change. I can't change the hearts of man or woman. You can't change the hearts of man or woman. But the glory can. The glory can. The glory can. And that's why, who is it? If I'm going to fully follow the Lord, then I am going to learn to dig down deep, down to the rock, and build upon the rock. I will build my life upon your... Whatever the words are. I mean, it's all throughout the Bible. If we are building on the principles of heaven, then you and I will start to realize, wait a minute, the secret is the glory. The secret is touching the hem of His garment. But not touching the hem of His garment as a physical hem. The touching of the hem of His garment because I have got myself to such a place that I've recognized who is wearing the garden. There's the presence there. And if I touch Him, if I touch the Lord in my praise, if I touch the Lord in my worship, if I touch the Lord in my venom and cries, then He'll say, who touched me? And glory gets released. And the people that aren't in the Spirit will go, Lord, you're asking, who touched you? There's a thousand people here mobbing you. He said, no, somebody touched me. There's thousands of churches meeting in Canada today. Life Church Muskoka, are we touching heaven? In our praises. I'm not competing with any other church. I like try, I bless the other churches, bless the other ministries, bless whatever... The mission is here. God, there's a foundation we're digging as a corporate body. We want to hit it. We want to build on the rock so that when the wind and waves come, and lately in Canada, it's been weekly. There's been winds and waves and this and that and up and down and everything seems to be shaken. But Lord, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You will never be shaken. So I will build upon what can't be shaken. Your presence, the power, the presence, the personal. So right now, this is a corporate setting that, yes, some of you might have felt some yeehaws and whatever this morning and let her rip, whatever. And I hope you did. I hope you felt shock waves and whatever. If you didn't, good for you if you praised and pressed in anyway. Because you're building something. Every time that you say, I don't feel a thing, but you dig, you're going deeper to hit the foundation. God has not forgotten you. And I'll just give you a couple quick points here. When you're digging, not plowing. Plowing is surface. When you're digging, the soil is different and the sound is different. Number two, digging, you can concentrate on a place. It's concentrated. So if there's an area in your life that you want to see the Holy Spirit touch, Concentrate your prayers on that area until it changes. Maybe it's a relationship. If you're digging a well, I'm not going to go around with a shovel, grab my shovel and lift the foot up here and run over there and lift the foot up over there and run back there and lift the foot up. No, I'm going to focus. I'm going to dig down until I hit what I want to hit. This is just me asking the Lord for some points for you. Number three, plowing is just turning it over. And, and that's good. Turning the soil over in your heart is good. And God will do that. He'll break up the fallow ground. But digging, you're displacing the soil. You're literally removing and you are creating a void that you want God to fill. Number four. 
Well, yeah, number four is a good one. I was going to skip it, but it's past, digging is past the vegetation. It's past the surface stuff, but that's where you get into the gold. When you get into the depths, that's where the treasure is. Number five, plowing is for food, to sustain you. Oh, just get to life, church. I can make her through another week. Do a little plow. Ha, <laughs> ha. Digging is for structure. If you're going to pour some some footings, you don't just plow the ground up a little bit. You dig deep, pour the footings so the structure can go on it. I only have uh, two more. Once there is a depth, there's new discoveries. So once you get down the first foot or the first two feet, you're changed. The goal is to get down that. First. If you're one of those people, oh, I don't, I don't pray. Nope. No, me and God, we got this agreement. I watch The Chosen and I have the audio Bible. No, you're a prayer warrior. You are. You are. Don't believe the lie. And the last one is that digging will create new community. And I I, I can't get away from that. The opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is community. And digging, when we dig, when we go down, not surface, like we want big people. I don't need thousands of people to change culture. I need a few people that are deep people that have dug down, gone into the depths. And when I meet somebody else, I can tell. I met an interesting businessman this week. I can tell he's been on the end of a shovel. I can tell. Just in every question that I ask, creates community. You will attract other diggers. This isn't a popular message. But if we're just one of those surface, let you know, throw a few seeds in it, throw some water on it, come back in six weeks and nothing grew. I'm done. I'm leaving the church. God wants to structure. He wants to build. This is like a greenhouse, actually, where we can control the atmosphere in here. Get you strong to then send you out, and then you'll make it. Any gardener knows if you're going to transplant a tree, you get one on the edge of the field because it's had the winds blow. If you're going to transplant it at your house or your farm, get one on the edge because it's had to survive the winds blow. Don't buy one in the middle and then you plant it in the middle of your field. It'll die in a month. Has it had the structure? Did anybody miss what I just said? Winds of adversity are good! Amen! Thank you, Jesus! Holy week! Woo! What a great time to start this new life! When's the best time to plant an oak tree? 30 years ago. When's the second best time? Today. This afternoon. So, Heavenly Father, thank you that you love us so much. You love us so much that you want us to have houses in the Spirit. Places of shelter. Psalm 91 Christians. That we have learned how to abide in the secret place, God. where we know Scripture when it says, if you are with me, who can be against me? As the deer pants for water, because I have learned how to dig, so my soul pants for you. Lord, I love you with all of my brain. No. 
I love you with all of my heart. Imagine if I said to Linda, oh, Linda, my brain loves you. We're praying right now, just so you know. Don't, don't laugh. God, I thank you that you love people. That this Holy Week, God, you rode into Jerusalem to fulfill every mandate that was put on you. You fulfilled Zechariah chapter 9 to a T, God. We thank you that this is the week that leads up to one of the high holidays of Christianity that we celebrate every morning when our feet hit the floor. Resurrection Sunday, it's again today! So, Lord, we thank you for resurrection, life, and power in marriages today. God, we're not yelling at our spouse to dig. We're digging. We're going down to the rock. We want to have a structure. We want to be known for our love for one another. So, Lord, we bless what you've started here. We thank you, God, that the words of the prophets that said you're going to drop the plow a little deeper, we're going to go a little more. We're going to see what's beyond the surface and get into the depths of the kingdom. Lord, I thank you for this challenging word on me today to dig deeper so the foundation is built on the rock. And we thank you that you are going to do something wonderful in Muskoka with these lives. All parts supplying, nothing missing, nothing broken. You're really doing it. And so I bless every person today, God, that in their families, in their work environment, in their relationships, God, the grace is there. The grace is there for us to dig in our private lives, to pray, to intercede, to bless, to honor. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I'm going to let you go today if you would like prayer. You can just stick around. We've got some altar area here. If you want to be left alone over to my left, or sorry, your left. Yes, your left. We'll leave you alone. If you need to go today, you can go. I want to encourage you on Wednesdays, we've got prayer here in the church. 10.45, 11 o'clock, right in that area there, if you want to come in, the church will be open for you to come and pray. Tuesday night, ladies, I think Pastor Linda will be at the helm this Tuesday night. She's got something cooking. She's been cooking it up all weekend. I've been listening to it. And so Tuesday night, ladies, you're going to be upstairs. And gentlemen, yes, we're back. Men only. Check your ID card at the door. Brave Company's back. So we'll be back here Tuesday at uh, 6.30 for social, 7 o'clock for our meeting. And then Wednesday uh, is our prayer in the morning. And then Wednesday night is our equip night. We're doing a series right now called God is Good. And those teachings are good. So if you want to come Wednesday night for that, Thursday night is typically our band practice night. And uh, yeah, that's our Holy Week. Good Friday, there is not a scheduled service. I really wrestled with that. Uh, so if you want to go to a Good Friday service, there's lots of churches that are having Good Friday service. We are not this year. Probably next year. Sunday, we will do communion. So we'll get you covered on Sunday for Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. No Good Friday service here. So that's a great day to spend time with kids and family. And if you're painting a kitchen or doing wallpaper or something, don't do it on Good Friday. No, anyway, do it on Saturday. Rest. Anyway, whatever. I don't want to get myself in trouble. Some people have different thoughts than I do. So. Bless your heart and every other part. And uh, was that fun? Oh. If you would like prayer. Come on, let's stand up. Put your hands up high if you're able. Lord, we're hungry. Lord, we're hungry. I can feel the needs in this room right now. We've got kids and grandkids and spouses and 
friends and neighbors and relationships, God, we give it up to you. We give it over to you. God, we thank you that you are going to do it. You are going to build your church here in Muskoka. You are doing it. And the gates of hell will not prevail. So we receive from heaven. We receive our instructions, God. We receive from your word. Take off the grave clothes and put on our garments of righteousness. I bless every person in this house today that they go out like calves released from the stall. In Jesus' name, amen.